Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you this morning? Are you blessed that you are here? Praise God. This is the first uh, Sunday of the month of June already, and uh, it's, it's, it's almost half of the year. And uh, we praise God that He has always been faithful to us. Amen. All right, why don't we start our worship with uh, our fellowship song? Let us all rise and extend our greetings to each other as we sing, I will enter his gates. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Jesus makes me glad. Jesus makes me glad. I will rejoice for Jesus makes me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice. Come on. You go out from where you are standing. Greet everyone. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for Jesus make me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Praise the Lord. Please take your seats. Please rise. the kings of the earth praise you Lord when they hear what you have decreed may they sing of the ways of the Lord for the glory of the Lord is great let us sing our hymn of praise how great thou art
Let us pray. Almighty, heavenly, and most loving Father, we come with joy to worship you, that this joy may be pure. Please forgive us our sins. Receive our praise and adoration, that you may be blessed by our worship. Speak to us through your word, that they may hear your guidance for our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Please be seated. For our call to confession is taken from Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Let us all offer our prayers of confession in silence. My brothers and sisters, let us sing our song of confession. Merciful and gracious, slow to anger, 
and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor requit us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Amen. Lately, it seems that we're getting more and more confused about what a church actually is. So let's take some time to set the record straight. Church is not a building, though a building can be used by a church. Church is not a denomination, though a set of beliefs should be important to a church. Church is not about Sunday, though a church should not forsake meeting together. Church is not about one person or personality, though every church should be pastored. And church is not about size or growth, though every church is called to make disciples. So don't think of church as an address or a location, but rather think of church as mobile and on the move. Don't think of church as something built or planted, but rather think of church as something deployed. Don't think of church as where you are for an hour each week, but rather what you are every day of the week, because the church is the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Feet shouldn't sit still. Hands shouldn't be idle. Feet go. Hands do. This is the church. Church isn't what you're sitting through right now, because you are the church. Now go and be the church. Good morning once again. Good morning. That video simply uh, introduces us to our theme for this uh, quarter, June, July, and August we will be talking about being the church all right so you are the church we don't just go to church you are the church i want you to tell the person next to you you are the church so that's our emphasis that we start being the church and stop just going to church because you are the church so that's our emphasis for this month of June July and August now the events happening this month is found in your uh, weekly bulletin there are two special uh, Sundays this month to look forward to our uh, Father's Day special on June 21 and then uh, June 28, everybody's wedding anniversary. So those of you married couples, don't miss this Sunday as we focus on the perpetual love between a husband and a wife, right? Now, for the other announcements in the church, make sure that you bring home your copy of the weekly bulletin. Please take note also that our weekly bulletin can also be seen in our website. And you can actually uh, also worship with us through the internet live every, every Sunday on the three services. Uh, just uh, check our Facebook account or our website because you have a link there on our worship services so in case you cannot worship on a Sunday maybe you are sick but if you have internet at home you can still join us for the worship now if you miss some of our services you can also check them out at our website all our services are uh, saved and uh, there is an archive there so you just go over and look for the date where you missed our service so we are doing our best to make sure that we maximize our communications so that wherever you are you're always part of this of this church all right so that's for uh, the, the month of uh, June 
We are sad to announce to all of us that another saint has gone home, one of our very active members of the choir, Mami Nelly Kal. Okay, uh, she usually sits there in that point. So, gi reserve gya po ninyo ang iyang lingkuranan. But you know, we are not that sad. Why? Because we believe that she is in a much better place now. The death of a saint is precious in the sight of the Lord. And the death of a saint is not a loss, but it is a gain. Amen? We, we know that we live. To live is Christ, and to die is gain. And so, of course, we would be missing her. Nawad anta o one members atong 100 voice choir. And I'm sure that with a congregation as big as this, there is a substitute. So, Mami Nelly sings very well. In fact, ang iyang voice is equivalent to five people. So, we need five people to, to be added in our choir. Mami Nelly Kal has been very active in this church since we were still at Jones Avenue. And uh, we want to extend our deepest sympathies and condolences to the Kal family. Uh, her remains lies at the St. Peter Chapel. Uh, I think it's James Saint, no, Saint Andrew Chapel. And uh, there will be a service tonight and tomorrow there. And then her body will be brought here on Tuesday evening for a special... No, it's a Tuesday evening. Okay? Uh, that was confirmed yesterday. Uh, it's Tuesday evening. She will be brought here for the special service. And since she's an active member of both the Covenant and the Chancel Choir, we will have a mini concert of the choir. So those of you who love singing and those of you who, who knows Mami Nelly, do come as we give our final respect to her on Tuesday evening here in our church sanctuary. All right, so that's about all for uh, the church announcements. At this point, let us uh, bow down our heads for our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, our loving Father, we want to praise you and honor you and give you, Lord, the worship that you deserve. But Lord, our worship is not at its best when we keep sins in our lives. We know, Lord God, that we cannot commune with you when we harbor in our hearts iniquities, evil things and thoughts. And so we want to confess them right now. Forgive us, Lord from our sins and thank you so much for your great promise that if we confess our sins you are faithful and just and will forgive us and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness Lord fill us with your Holy Spirit this morning so that we will be able to understand your word for us Lord bless our emphasis about being the church a lot of times, oh God, we just act as audience, as spectators, Lord. But Lord, help us that in this coming weeks, oh God, we will be able to know our real identity, that we are your body, that we are the church. Bless the preaching of your word this morning, that it will edify your saints and it will glorify you in heaven. Lord, we want to pray for the ministries and programs of the church this month of June. Bless our kids' ministry, O oh God. We know that the kids are the future of this church. And so we pray that you are going to provide their needs. They need more volunteers, Lord, more teachers, 
those to assist them. We pray, Father, for that. They are in need of a, an LCD projector, a laptop, and some other equipments, O oh God, to better enhance, Lord God, their services to the kids. And so we are praying, O oh God, that you will provide these needs. We want to pray, Father, in heaven also for uh, our missions and evangelism ministry of the church and church planting. We have a church planting work in Lapu-Lapu, in Consolacion and Liluan. And we want to pray, Lord, for our pastors assigned there. Provide them with people, Lord, that will assist them. We pray, Father, that if there is something that we can do to support this church planting works, challenge us, O oh God. We are praying, Lord, that soon a church can truly be planted in these areas and that people will be shared with the gospel and that more and more souls will be added, Lord, to the number of those being saved. We are praying, O oh God, for our school that will start tomorrow. We pray that you would bless the opening of classes for Cebu Bradford School. We need more students, O oh God, and so we are praying that during this week, some more new students will be added, O oh God. We pray for the staff, our new principal. We pray, Father, for all the faculty that you will give them, Lord, your blessings. We pray, Father, in heaven for our ministry, Lord, of uh, giving support, giving care, Lord, to our members. We pray, Father in heaven, that you would bless this ministry so that we can truly accommodate the needs, Lord, of the members of this church. And we are praying also that you will add more volunteers to the workforce. Truly, O oh God, the work is so plenty. The harvest is huge, Lord, and the workers are few. May you raise up, Lord God, more leaders from this church. We now pray, Lord God, for the individual needs of your people this morning. We know, Lord, that we come here to worship you and to honor you, but we also come here, Lord, bringing our burdens to you because you said, Lord, that we can cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. Lord, may you minister to the needs of your people. Be to them, Lord, according to their needs this morning. And now we pray for our nation. We pray for the evangelistic movement in the Philippines today. We pray, Father, that the gospel will be preached, Lord God, will continue to, to grow, Lord, that more and more souls may be added, Lord, to your kingdom through the ministry of the church and parachurch organizations. Lord God, we pray for the revival of the spiritual life of the Philippines. We ask for your guidance upon our president. Give him, Lord, your wisdom so that he can lead this nation towards holiness and righteousness. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
praise God for that message to song. That song is practically what our uh, series is all about. That we are, we are God's people. We are the church. Amen? Let us now read our scripture reading. May I request the congregation to please stand as we give honor to the word of God. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. May God bless the reading from his holy word. Please be seated. Our message this morning as part one of our season series is entitled, We Belong to God. We belong to God. We are the church. And as I have said, our theme is this, don't just go to church, be the church. Right? Be the church. Again, tell the person next to you, you are the church. Okay. You notice that that's exactly what the word church means? The church, it's you are. You are the church. The church cannot be the church without you, without the R. <laughs> so you are the church. A lot of people think of church as just a building. Like, you know, our church is there. We think of a church as a location. Where is your church? Okay, or we will go to the church. It's a place. It's a building. But no, it is the people. It is the people that makes up the church. And that is our focus. Because we are not just to believe in Christ, but we are to belong in Christ. And belonging in Christ is what church is all about. Now we move now from the bring, if you recall, the month of May, we focus on the bring. Remember, there are four B's in our church. Bring, belong, build, and then bless. So our emphasis now is the, in, on the belong part, being part of the church. Now God is a relational God. It is God's desire that people will be part of his family. And what God was building when he called the nation of Israel was not to create a religion, but to create a family. Ephesians 1.5 tells us, His unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. And this gave him great pleasure so what made or what gave God great pleasure when people are brought to him and we become part of his family Ephesians 2 19 tells us, so then you are no longer foreigners and strangers in this world but fellow what citizens with God's people and members of his household so friends the church is God's family that is why we call God the Father. And that is why I forbid people in our church to call each other sir or mom. We don't call those, you know, we don't use those titles in the church. Use them in the offices. But in the church, we call each other ate, kuya, mommy, daddy, nanay, tatay. Why? Because we are the church. We are the family. And that is why we call each other here brothers and sisters right and so if you do not know a person in the church and you want to ask that person you know here's the good way to call that person just say kuya oh, pero nakalimot ko kasi ang ngalan good that's the safest way ate or if you think murag ma offend man siya tawgon og og koan nang og nong tita na lang right 
Oh, right? Or if the person doesn't want to be called tatay, tito, or daddy. In other words, we, call, we use those titles in the church because this is the family of God and we have to be what we are called to be. But as a church, we have our identity. Just like any family. The Saseda family, they have their own identity. The Sabaili family, the Sabala family, the Lim family. We all have our family semblance. One family is unique to the other. And the same with the church. We are a unique people. And that's the first thing that we must understand here in our passage in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. We need to know our identity. You know why? Because a lot of Christians today are experiencing identity crises. A lot of Christians, so many Christians today are having identity crises. You know what I mean with identity crises? They don't know how to behave outside. It's like we are Christians, we are the church, but when we are outside, we live like the rest of men. We live like the world. In fact, I find it very offending when somebody says, I Christian din, Zia. Like, for example, in the hospital, you know, I know a doctor who comes from, you know, a, a Chinese church, and the nurse, you know, comes from this church. And then when I was there, when, when the doctor says, Pastor, I know you. Yeah you, go, yeah, you look familiar. And then the member of our church says, Yeah, kaila de ka ni pastor. And nga, Christian de ka. Oh, Christian po de ka dok. You know, and you know, it's a funny thing, but you know what? It's, for me, it's embarrassing because two Christians are having identity crises. They don't know each other. You know, we are supposed to be known by the way we talk, the way we deal our businesses. The way we handle ourselves when there are situations. Because as Christians, we are different. Remember 2 Corinthians 5.17. Let's read together. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and behold, the new has come. So you are new. Amen. Tell the person next to you, you are a new creation. Right? The world outside, they are still the old creation. They are, you know, they may look new. Their, their face is new. It's always new. Their hair is newly dyed. But a person, if a person is not yet born again, it hits the old, old sinful nature there. It's still the old carnal self. But the Christian, listen Christian, even if, you know, our faces are not new because, you know, we don't spend so much with keeping ourselves, uh, you know, new. But let me tell you, when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you are always new. Amen? Because that's the work of the Spirit, to revive us. Remember what Lamentation says? God's, you know, love, God's faithfulness, they are what? They are new every morning. So Christian, you are different. You are not the same as your neighbors. Right? So what makes us different? Now, here are four, four points, four descriptions, four identifying marks of a true Christian, of a true believer of the church. Okay, number one, we are predestined people. That's according to Peter. But you are a chosen people. That's the first thing. So if you're having an identity, identity crisis in your life, note this, you are chosen. You are predestined. Now the word chosen there comes from the Greek word eklektos. It means chosen out, elected, marked, or predestined. What's the meaning of that? Meaning to say, my dear friends, you and I are Christians today because God elected us. All right? Now, the doctrine of election bothered so many people. Some Christians don't, you know, they could not harmonize election. They could not understand election. That is why you need to enroll in our SOD class. Because that's what we've been talking about for the last two weeks. The doctrine of election. Now, election, some people would say that is an obscure teaching, but no. 
The Bible is filled with doctrines of election. In the Old Testament, this is what God said, The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be His people, His treasured possession. He's referring here to the chosen nation, Israel. And, you know, if you read farther, it says there, I did not choose you because... You know, you are great or you are big. No, God says, I chose you because of my affection. In other words, God chose us not because of anything that we have. Not of any foreseen merit. But He chose us based on His sovereign choice. That's election. Now, even Jesus Christ in Matthew 24 talking about the end of days during the great tribulation this is what jesus said if those days had not been cut short no one would survive it's going to be a very you know terrible time but for the sake of what the elect those days will be shortened so this world is thankful that the elect are here the reason why the philippines cannot be destroyed by a great earthquake and all Filipinos will die because there are elect in the Philippines. Amen? It's for the sake of the elect, the chosen people of God. Mark 13, 27, and he will send his angels and gather his what? His elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. This refers to the rapture. You know? So during the rapture, all elect from all corners of the world, from all nations and tribes, will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Notice how Jesus called the Christians, the believers. You know, he called them the elect. And here's the explanation, Ephesians 1.4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world. So when did God chose people to be saved? Before he created the world. In other words, before Adam and Eve were created, God already chose you and me. He chose the Jews. He chose the elect. He chose the saints. Amen? To be holy and blameless in his sight, in love, he predestined us to become adopted children in Christ Jesus. So friends, that's who you are. That's who I am. I am chosen right i am a christian today because of god's sovereign choice in the past so it's not that i'm a christian today because you know i i received jesus christ as my lord and savior 10 years ago well listen before you made that decision to receive jesus christ he chose you in eternity past amazing right that's the doctrine of election and that's what Paul says about the church. You are a predestined people. Number two, this is our second identifying mic. We are priestly people. We are priestly. Look at the second description. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. Now, in the Old Testament, what's the work of the priest? You know, anyone, anyone cannot just be a priest. Only from the tribe of Levi. Only a Levite. And only, and particularly from the line of, from the line of Aaron. Right? Only those sons of Aaron can become a priest. Now, what's the work of the priest? The priest acts as what? A mediator between God and man. Now, particularly, the work of the priest is to bring people to God. Now, what about from God to people, pastor? Whose work is that? That's the work of the prophet. All right? So the prophet and priest, they are the two important, you know, people in the Old Testament. The prophet, it's God to man. God speaking to man. That's the work of the prophet. But from man to God, the priest. In other words, in the Old Testament economy, people could not just go to God and ask for something. No. They have to go through the priest. And that's the work of the priest, even for confession of sin. They cannot go directly to the Father. They have to go through the priest. And here's an example here. The priest would 
pray and lay hands on the goat and would pray that Lord may the sins of all these people you know be absorbed by this goat and as they you know set free the goat okay it means that the sins of the people are what are also freed forgiven now also the only the priest can approach the presence of God no one can approach the presence of God only the priest and only the great high priest can enter the holy of holies once every year for the Yom Kippur or the day of atonement you see that's the Old Testament but you know what in the New Testament all that changed you know why because when Jesus Christ died on the cross remember the the curtain that separates the Holy of Holies was torn apart top to bottom in other words God is opening the way that if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you are now a priest of God so we have this doctrine of the priesthood of believers the priesthood of believers this is the New Testament teaching but you know what the priesthood of believers okay vanish you know in the history of the catholic church and it was only revived during the reformation through martin luther because again in the catholic church they went back to the old testament ways that no one can go to god except through the priest but that is not the new testament teaching of christ because in 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 first peter 2 9 it's very clear you are a chosen people you are a royal priesthood now pastor what's the difference between the christian priesthood and the old testament priesthood we are royal you know why because in the old testament the great high priest which started from aaron aaron is not a royalty <laughs> he was not a royalty but who is the great high priest of the christians hebrews 4 verse 14 jesus christ he is our great high priest and he is not just a priest he is the king and so our great high priest is a king and that makes us royal priesthood amen that makes the christian priesthood superior to the old testament priesthood you know why because in the old testament period uh, uh, priesthood the great high priest must also sacrifice from himself because he himself was a sinner but our great high priest is jesus christ god without sin and you know the implication of that because we are priests we can what come boldly into the throne of grace of god we have direct access to the father through christ amen in the old testament people don't have direct access to god only the priest but in the new testament my dear friends that's who we are the church we are priests okay we are priests and so we have direct access look at hebrews 4 14 since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens jesus christ the son of god let us what let us therefore come boldly into God's throne of grace so that we may what? Receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Imagine that. Do you need, do you need the grace of God today? Do you have problems? Praise God that we are in the New Testament. Because you don't have to go to the pastor. Pastor, I need this. Would you please ask this to God? No. Imagine the... How, how great it is that we belong to the priesthood of Christ that today when we have need the Bible says we can simply come boldly into the throne of grace of God we don't have to seek for a priest why because Jesus is saying you are the priest amen so we can come boldly and not only that remember the work of the priest in the Old Testament it is bringing people to God it's not so much of bringing God to the people it is bringing people to God. So as priests, we are accountable to bring people to God. We must be involved in the lives of people. Now in this sense, Christians, you know, must rub shoulders with non-Christians. In this sense. You know why? Because the only way for them to be blessed by God is through you. Hello. 
You are the access. We are the representatives of God. And so as priests, we bring the needs of people to God. And so there's a problem if the church isolates herself from the world. You know what? What will happen? If we isolate ourselves from the world, then we are not acting like Christ. Because when Jesus Christ was here, He was so much involved with people. He was with those who were sick. He was with those who were demon-possessed. He was with those sinners. Yet He did not do what they were doing. In other words, as church, we don't isolate ourselves. So what should we do, pastor? We need to insulate ourselves. Okay? Instead of isolating, meaning, you know, they are worldly. You know, some churches are that. Okay, you, you don't, let's not go to Ayala. There, it's, you know, it's the place of sinners. Okay, let's just stay here in our church. That's not what Jesus Christ commanded the church. God says, go. We are not supposed to just stay here. But as we go, we have to insulate ourselves. Oh, by, by the way, what do you mean by insulate? Okay, what is an insulator? Do we have an engineer here? Tatay Rani, you're an engineer. Okay? You know what keeps me from being, you know, electrocuted? There's, there's electricity here. But why is it that, you know, I'm in contact with this, but I'm not affected? Because there's an insulator. An insulator is attached to the electricity, but electricity cannot pass on. Friends, that's the church. We go with unbelievers, we go with sinners, but we don't allow ourselves to be affected by their sins. Hello. That's who we are. But the problem with a lot of Christians today, again, identity crisis. We go with the world, and we follow the world. And no wonder... When somebody says you're a Christian and people are amazed, oh, Christian, they go. Di lagi makita. You know, hard to tell. <laughs> you know, it's so embarrassing. But listen, we are chosen, we are predestined, we are what? We are priests. Third, we are purified people. Mura tag too big. You know, we are purified. You know, I, I don't use the word we are pure. To be pure and to be purified are two different things. Why? Because it says there you are a holy nation. Now, we have a wrong, wrong concept of holy. We think of holy as sinless. Now, the word holy, hagios, means set apart. All right? Now, if you are going to apply it in our modern terms, it simply means to be distinct. You are cleansed. In other words, you are purified. We are pure. You know, we know that we contaminate ourselves with sin every day. But here's the difference. I sin, the world sin. But here's the difference. Because of the blood of Jesus, my sins are cleansed while theirs are not. Amen? Look at 1 Corinthians 6, 9. This may shock a lot of us this morning. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Right? And that's a very clear statement. Paul is saying, those who persist in doing what is evil and what is sin, they will not enter the kingdom of God. And then Paul went on to list down what are these sins, what are these, you know, wrongdoers, who are these wrongdoers that cannot enter the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral. Okay, who is a sexually immoral pastor, okay? What makes a person, you know, do a sexual that is moral? It is only moral when you commit or when you do the act of sex to your husband or to your wife. In other words, sex outside marriage is immoral. And then, nor the idolaters, of course, we know those who worship idols, nor the adulterers nor the homosexuals, right? nor the thieves, nor the greedy, the drunkards, nor the slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Right? Now, here's what Paul said. And that is what some of you were. Take note of the verb. Where? 
In other words, the, the saints in Corinth, some of them were adulterers. Some of them were homosexuals. Some of them were thieves. Some of them were swindlers. But take note, that is what some of you were. Look at the next verse, verse 11. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. You see, we are all sinners, but when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we no longer do those things. We were washed. And, you know, I, I'm so confused that there are churches that exist for immoral people. In fact, there's a website, you know, Christian LGBT. And for me, being a Christian and being an LGBT is a contradiction. I'm sorry. It is not my point to offend someone, but the Bible is really offensive. All right? And some people don't want to make it offensive. That's why we try to sugarcoat it. But you know what? In the Bible, sin is sin. You cannot enter heaven the same way. You have to be washed. You have to be sanctified. In fact, that's why St. Paul says, that is what some of you wear. Why? Because even if, you know, Jesus doesn't care if you have been an adulteress for 500 women, because if you repent and come to Christ, your old is gone. Amen? God will no longer consider your past. God doesn't care about your past. God cares about your present. And we are purified people. Amen? Now question, ask yourself, am I really purified? Because we are to be a community of people, listen to this, that operates on a distinctly different set of values and principles based on our relationship with God. You see, you cannot be related to God and remain the same. Hello, are you listening? I cannot call myself a Christian and yet remain the old self. No, that's a contradiction. Because anyone who will be part of Christ will become what? New. You're a new creation. And so, kanang atong mga butang, mga bisyo, nga nabilong pa sa atong old life, okay, don't, don't bring them. They are just an excess baggage to your life. They will keep you from being a mature Christian. Right? So if you still have some vices in your life now, you know what? You pray to God. You kneel down. Lord, could you please remove this? Pastor, will it work? Yes. Ask some of those who have been set free from smoking, from drinking, from womanizing. The power of Jesus can set you free. Amen? There is nothing that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. I believe that. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. That's in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. You know? So if you have some, you know, baggages, you know, you're always bringing these things. Anger, you're malice, you're so malicious. Okay? Any sin that is habitual, bring them at the feet of our Lord. Because that's what the blood of Jesus Christ is for. It is to cleanse us, to purify us, to make us holy. Again, Christians are not sinless, but we just sin less. All right? Did you get that? Christians are not sinless. Okay? I'm, I'm still very far from being sinless, but I sin less. Amen? Are you sinning less? All right. Number four. Our fourth distinctive. We are purchased people. Purchased people. Look at the next phrase you are chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation i don't know if this is the version that you have you know in this verse only this portion has several you know translation all the rest is the same chosen you know but this word you know a lot of english translators are having a problem how to translate it okay check your check your translation for some it says a people belonging to god okay who who among us here with a Bible with that same translation? I'm using there the old NIV. Do you have that translation? Okay, I guess most of you don't have that. Some, they have this. A people for his own possession. 
Okay, if you have the King James Version, it's a lot different. Okay, his own special people. In the King James Version, it says a peculiar people. It's so totally different from our modern English. A peculiar. Okay, you know why English translators are having a problem? Because the word there doesn't appear in any other writings. It's a very unique word. It's the word peripoesis. And it means something acquired, bought or purchased for a price. All right. That's why if you buy something, okay, that's the meaning. And it's, there's no one word to describe that, that Greek word. It means a something that is bought for a purpose and reason. Okay, that's the, the meaning of the word. And so the NIV translated, if, if you buy something, all right, and it's yours, what do you call it? Okay, that's why some translation would say your own possession. That's why they are God's possession. And for others, what do you call the things that you own? You say, they are my belonging. That's why you have some verse, versions to say belonging. The point is this. The church, we now belong to God because God purchased us. All right? There was a point in our life that we don't belong to God. Before you become a Christian, you, you are not God's. You are Satan's property. Okay? That's the fact of the matter. Before we become Christians, are you listening? Before you come to Christ, before you're born again, we belong to Satan. In fact, Jesus says, you belong to your father, the devil. John chapter 8. You see? Whose belonging are the unbelievers? Not God's. So if you are not yet born again today, okay, you are still a visitor in this church. Even if you've been a member of this church for 10 years. If you are not yet born again, in the list of God, you are still a visitor. You belong to another family. Okay, Satan's family. And you are sitting here in the family of God. And you are welcome here, by the way. And God is saying, you are welcome also to change family. Because that's what the gospel is all about. Amen? He wants us, he wants to move unbelievers to his family. And what's the price, by the way? Friends, are you listening? What's the price of, of purchasing a sinner from the fold of Satan to the fold of God. What's the price? The blood of Jesus. Look at 1 Corinthians 6.20. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. What's the price? And the church which he bought with his what? With his own blood. Friends, you and I, we are possessions of God today because of the blood of Jesus. That's why we have the communion once, once a month. Imagine, can you see your identity now? That's who you are. That's who I am. I am predestined. Lord, thank you. Lord, I thought I chose you, but it was you who chose me. Lord, I thank you that I'm purified. Lord, I know my sins, but every time I confess it, I know I'm forgiven. And Lord, thank you so much that, you know, Lord, I may not look, I may not have the semblance of Jesus in my face. No? Murag kontrabida kitag naong, no? Murag atong naong, murag dili gyud santos. But praise God that you are purchased. Amen? That I belong to God because Jesus died for me. Right? And I love the hymn. Can, can we sing this? Can you play this, babes? Can you play this song? Can we sing this? Okay? Jesus, my Lord. Okay? Can you give me an F? Okay? You know this song? About ending a song? Yeah. Alright. F ko no. Jesus my Lord. Ready sing. Jesus my Lord will love me forever. From him no power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. 
not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Amen? Imagine that. You belong to God, I belong to God, because Jesus ransomed my soul. Okay, that's our identity. We only have one application. What is that? It's this, that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who called you out of darkness into His what? Into His marvelous light. What's the purpose of being predestined, being a priest, being purified, being, what's the last one? Purchase. What's the purpose? Just for us to look good? Just for us to have fashion show on Sundays? Just for us to, you know, just brag around it, you know, I'm saved, you're not. I'm going to heaven, you're going to hell. Is that the reason why we were saved? No. Our reason for existence is this. It is to proclaim the excellencies of God. We are to proclaim God's greatness, my dear friends. All right? Listen to this. We don't define ourselves in terms of who we are in and of ourselves in terms of what God did for us. I am a Christian now, not because of my choice. I am a Christian because I'm related to Christ. I am saved now because of what God did. And what's our purpose? You are not to keep it a secret. You have to tell people about the greatness of God. Now, here's my application. We are into media right now, right? Social media. And I already said this to my B group. We made a covenant. If you look at, okay, we all have our Facebook accounts, right? What do we usually put there? You know, parties and then the selfie, all right? Now, this is my covenant with our group. We have to be serious in being proclaimers of Jesus. This is our covenant, and it's up to you if you follow our covenant. This is our covenant. We only use our social media like Facebook, Twitter, whatever, you know, account you have. We only post there if the, the, the thing that we post proclaims God, okay? And we made a deal, if I see someone posting something there and then you are proclaiming yourself and not God, I said, this is, this is my private message to you. Sample, Jess Palma, nag-post siya dito. Ako siyang ignored. What's God proclaiming in your post? Okay, and please give me the right to do the same to you. If I see your post and there is no explanation whatsoever that God has something to do with that, in other words, you are proclaiming yourself. We are in a world that is so absorbed with self. That's why we call it selfie. Let's make it Godfie. <laughs> All right? So we are doing this in my B group, in my Friday group, and in Monday group. That whenever I see in your Facebook a post or anything, a writing that what? Exalts the self. You know, the self is so exalting. You know, nindot kayo magisulob. You know, nipalit kag pagkaon, food, that's gluttony. Right? I will really write you, and please forgive me as your pastor, I will really write you what's so God honoring with your post. And if you cannot, if you cannot justify it, remove it. All right? Because our business, I would really tell you, if you're really a member of Bradford Church, our business is to proclaim Jesus and God, not self. We don't sell ourselves. Amen? So use your Facebook, use your text, use whatever media to proclaim the Lord. All right? And please do the same to me. All right? And I, by the way, I'm not the one holding my Facebook. If you see something in my Facebook that is God-honoring, please do the same. Pastor, what's God-honoring with your post? All right? And then I will answer you, well, I'm God's creation. <laughs> okay? Let me close with this verse. Sing to the Lord, praise His name. Proclaim His salvation. Take note, day after day. You see, David already saw that every day we can proclaim God. Where? In the Facebook. You cannot go to, to places every day, but you can go there through Facebook. So David see that you know, there's going to be a day that people will actually 
proclaim His salvation. So post verses in your Facebook every day and thereby fulfilling this verse. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all people. So whenever there are good things you want to share to Facebook, always make it God's work. Okay? Whenever you're posting your party, make it God's work. Well, this is God, what God did for me. Praise God for the new car. Oh, Praise God for the new nose that I have. It's always, you know, all credit should go to God. Because that's what the Bible is saying. Alright? And verse 4, For great, let's read together, For great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise. Let's pray. Father, we hope and pray, Lord God, that we can be the people that you save us to be. You don't save us, Lord. You didn't save us just for us to proclaim ourselves, but to proclaim you. Lord, forgive us for all those wasted times and resources of simply promoting the self. Lord, we want to promote you. We want people, everyone, to know that we belong to you. Lord, help us to do that. Bless us, O oh God, and prepare us to receive the communion. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us sing our communion hymn, I Hear Thy Welcome Voice. Please rise. Please rise. Beloved in the Lord, if you have confessed your sins and trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you are welcome to partake in the Lord's table. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this, all of you, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks in the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of our Lord. And so every man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks the cup. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, may the Lord Jesus Christ, our great high priest, be present with us as he was among his disciples. 
in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. Lord, we ask that you will bless and consecrate this bread and this cup, Lord, as holy symbols of the body and blood of our Savior. And help us, Lord God, to remember him who died for us, rose from the grave to give us everlasting life. Help us, Lord, to receive the grace that will restore us, that will rebuild us, that will renew us for this month. For your glory and for your honor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, ministering in Christ's name, I give you this bread and this cup.
Beloved in the Lord, Jesus said, This is my body broken for you. Let us eat this together and so remember him. Again, Jesus said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us drink this together and so remember him. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for feeding us with this sacred symbols of the body and blood of our Savior. With this, we remember the one whose life was broken so that ours might be mended. Help us, Lord, to be nourished spiritually from this sacrament. And with this, Lord, help us to be the kind of people that we are that will proclaim and publish your excellencies. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. If we do not lose heart, so then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all men, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Let us present our tithes, pledges, and love offerings to the Lord.
us pray. Heavenly Father, the true and great provider, thank you that your word is true and that your promises never fail. Thank you very much for meeting our needs when we live for you each day. We humbly offer these gifts, pledges, tithes, and love offerings to you. Help us to use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us sing our last hymn, The Church One Foundation. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, that we are your church, bought by your own blood. You died for us so that we can live for you. Lord, help us to live, to act, to behave the way we are as your church. Help us, Lord, to proclaim your greatness, your excellencies, using everything that it is in us, our work, our profession, even the social media, even our cell phones. Everything, Lord God, in us, they are yours to use, Lord God, to proclaim your glory. Lord, we are your ambassadors. Help us, O oh God, to be the people, Lord, that you called us to be. We'd like to pray for this, your children who are kneeling. They have special needs and maybe thanksgiving, Lord, presented to you this morning. Bless them, Lord. Be to them according to their needs. Be with your people this week, Lord. Protect us, Lord, from the evil one. Bless your people. Prosper them. Let them a blessing to others so that people may see God in them. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. <clears throat> Amen.